Hey guys, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I am Daniel, and today we're going to talk about creating an adventure for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, or my experience doing that. I took a course with the Storyteller Collective, I mentioned this a couple videos back, so people are interested, um, about writing and adventures for publication. And they basically had a few different tracks that you could take. Uh, one was 5th edition, one was kind of generic fantasy, which you might think, well, Daniel, would, why would you do that one? I'll talk about that in a second. And the other one was... Um, Call of Cthulhu, basically Chaosium. So I looked at, they kind of showed like what each course had, and it seemed like a lot of them shared uh, similar paths, but the the one that I would imagine would be the generic one, like the OSR one, had everything, or I should say the 5e one had everything the OSR one had, plus additional stuff like laying out for 5e, how to use, uh, you know, the DM's guild, all that stuff. So I figured, why not? And I am not, uh, even though I don't play 5e that much, I did, you know, in fact, start and I played it for a good four years. I mean, I ran tons and tons of 5e. So I thought this would be a good uh, way for me to break away from my norm of what I normally do and also to try something new. And I will say, if, if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below if you want me to talk more about the course itself. Um, I did actually, a couple of friends of mine uh, took the Chaosium track. So I saw kind of their uh, their stuff too, and maybe I can get one of them on or both, um, to talk about it and see their experiences with the course. But I'm not going to overly talk about the course here. I just want to talk about the adventure, my thoughts in creating it, because I know that, uh, you know, a lot of people watch this channel, create their own adventures, so maybe you'd be interested in this. And some of the uh, things I thought were interesting about the difference between creating this adventure, which I'm creating for other people to run, versus creating an adventure from my table. So I'm going to do this. Boop. There we go. All right, so here's the cover. It's called No Time to Haggle. Um, what I did was, of course, this was for publication, and I didn't. We didn't have a lot of time, nor did I have. I didn't want to really have a budget or spend a budget on art. So what I did was I used stuff that was in the public domain. Uh, places like Wikimedia Commons has uh, not only stuff listed because I've seen other things where it shows public domain images and they just show them. This actually lists when it was originally published, why it's in public domain, whether it was donated or if it just passed the. The, uh, the, the time period, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, this is a derivative art. I took two different uh, images, one of the kind of a hag face on the top and the other one of like an ogre, um, which ties into the story in a second. And I kind of just put them together to create kind of a, a simple cover. Um, yes, I would love to have yeah, professional artists make covers for me. And maybe if I start doing this more and more, which I'm thinking do, uh, that's something I'll do. But at this point, I thought it was for a class, it's for my first one. And by the way, I guess I should say this. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in this uh, to buy this adventure. Um, you know, feel free. So this is the cover. Again, I just did it myself. Um, nice and simple. And one thing that they talk about is exactly that. Now, if you are going to make adventures for 5th edition and you are using, uh, if you want to have it published on the DMs Guild versus, let's say, Drive Through RPG, and there's reasons for both, and there's lots of videos about this, so I'm not going to get into this too much, they do have some art available as well. Also, you can buy stock art. There's lots of different ways to do it. I just, I really love the old weird tales, uh, amazing stories, like covers. So I thought I would just take some of those and push them together to create the vibe that I wanted. Because even though this is in 5th edition, um, I still wanted to keep it the way I run it, right? So I didn't want to run it in Forgotten Realms. I wanted to keep keep it a little more kind of greedy with fairy tale mixed in, because that's kind of the stuff that I like. So I went into that right away, um, thinking I was going to do that. So let's see. So at the beginning, what's cool is they give you a um, like a form that, formula that you can use to make it look more 5th edition-y, <laughs> which is really nice, because you can see how I did this here. And um, there's lots of information about using... Um, in this course, I'm talking about the course one I was going to show you, about laying things out. So you'll see that, well, actually it actually looks like my page numbers are not lined up. That's actually really funny. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> so we uh, we look at this, you know, credits out the bio. So what I decided to do here was um, create um, an adventure where my idea was that the party, you know, traveling around looking for adventure, this is a low level adventure, second level. Um, the party uh, going around looking for adventure has stumbled upon this inn that, that seemed pretty chill. They were just kind of like they're happy to be able to eat and just kind of relax. And when they wake up, essentially what's happened is the inn and the surrounding land has been scooped up and put into a giant wheelbarrow. Um, well, the wheelbarrow is normal size. They've actually been shrunk, which they will figure out. And also the same is true with various other parts of the countryside. So there's lots of different areas here. And I use this. I made this map over here. I think you can see my mouse went that, but I made this mouse over, uh, made this map over here in um, XKit, which I uh, did the Kickstarter for a few years back, 
And essentially in the center, they start in the inn and then you've got different terrains they can see around them. They see a graveyard, they see a swamp, they see a, a kind of a frozen wasteland, they see a desert and they see kind of two forests. One's kind of a spring glade and the other one's kind of a fall uh, thing to either side. Uh, and then that rocky terrain around them is basically an area that they can't pass. They'll figure out pretty quickly that the wheelbarrow they're trapped in has just shrunk them once they kind of do some uh, investigation. And then they will make their way out. So this is basically a mini hex crawl. I mean, in the end, they're really only going to go through two hexes unless they want to gather around. They're going to go through one of the ones that's right next to them and then one of the forests because those are basically the way out. So it's pretty simple. It's designed around a one shot. Um, but I wanted to have a lot of different stuff in here. Now, what I thought was interesting is I could have basically written this adventure down on a napkin and run it myself, <laughs> you know. But when you're running it for somebody or creating it for somebody else to run, you need to think of things like, OK, how are the adventurers going to know how to get out of the wheelbarrow? What's, you know, in a in fifth edition, there's rules for that, right? If they make a successful arcana check or whatever. So you want to factor that in, right? If you have an idea and you're creating an adventure, you really want to make sure it's clear to the GM what they're supposed to be doing if that is, you know, up in the air. You could leave things, of course, for them to create, but you don't want to leave it so vague thinking to yourself like, well, yeah, of course, anybody would do that. And in fact, when we play tested, I had, I had another GM run it for me. <laughs> the players did exactly the thing I didn't think they were going to do. I thought there's no way they're going to go to this area. It looks too dangerous. And that's exactly where they went. So, you know, it's good that I had all that stuff worked out so that they would be able to... Um, Figure it out. So I have my map here, like I said. Um, and again, what I did was, this is recommended in the course, broke it down with a little bit of background, a little synopsis. So essentially what's happening here is this hag um, has, she's trying to build this this reef, this reef of death um, off the coast of, a, you know, off a coastal region. And she's been uh, having this ogre collect these like clods of earth that are, you know, occupied by people, and they're dumping them over this cliff, essentially killing all these people and destroying all this land to create this reef, um, you know, down in the ocean shore. So at the time the party gets scooped up, this is like the last one. So the idea here is that they're going to work through these hexes. They're going to either gain, um, you know, friends or enemies, I guess, uh, as they go through the hexes. They will escape the wheelbarrow, confront the ogre, which is a second level party, is not a tremendously hard fight, but still a tough fight. And then they will either head to the cliff to to fight off the hag or try to take off with the wheelbarrow to save everybody. You know, they've got a lot of choices and a lot of that's how I like to leave my adventures open. I don't like to have my adventures so set in stone that, you know, this is linear, linear, linear. This is a fairly linear adventure because if you follow the, the, the path, you're basically going to discover the are in the wheelbarrow, work your way through a couple of hexes, get out, confront the ogre and then ultimately confront the hag. Because if you try to. Uh, if you go to the hag, obviously you're going to fight her. If you try to take the wheelbarrow to rescue people, she's going to chase you down. Now, if you just escape and then leave the wheelbarrow, you know, that's fine as well, right? That's the, that's probably the only case where you won't confront the hag. So it, it is linear in that sense, right? Uh, but it's less quantum ogre uh, than it needs to, than, than some adventure I've been on. Um, because you can do a lot of things with it. So that, that was kind of my idea. And what I did was I, I made a little bit, you know, each area I blocked out, I, I put a a person in each area that they could encounter. When I say a person, there was, you know, like they're, they're, they're monstrous races for the most part, because um, I did want to make a challenge. I wanted people to think, hey, should we try to befriend these lizard folk or these orcs or these whatever it is, goblins, right? We want, you know, does the party want to interact with these people and try to befriend them? Or are we going to see them and go, oh, let's kill them because they're not us, right? So it creates a little bit of a moral uh, thought there. And depending on the vibe of your world, it, how people interact will be different. I also created a small like dungeon within it uh, because I, I can't create anything about a dungeon. Uh, so if they go into the graveyard area, there's a little dungeon in there. And even, you know, again, when you're writing things for somebody else, like I even put down the corner, you see this blue, it's called the waiting game. This is the area where I kind of describe my thoughts. If the party decides to like, because parties might do this, right? If they decide to just, look up at the sky, see there's a giant ogre pulling the wheelbarrow, say, well, they're going to be taking us somewhere. Let's just wait. <laughs> right? So I even put a little thing, because again, I'm writing it for somebody else. Now, I knew what I would do in that case, but it didn't occur to me when I first started writing this that, hey, it's important for me to put that in there because I have an idea of what should happen. So, you know, this is kind of the things you want to think of. When you're writing an adventure for somebody else to run, you've really got to consider that things that you might house rule or do the rulings thing 
you want to at least give some kind of an idea of how you would do it. Even if they're going to change it, you still want to have a rule in there. Like if, if there is a, a monster that is supposed to be aggressive and is going to do a certain tactic, then you, you know, in your mind, then you want to make sure you list that. And I think that's one of the big takeaways from this is that you want to write your adventure so that it's clear what the intention of any of the monsters or traps or NPCs is. Whether the DM wants to change that, that's up to them. So again, this is not so long. This, this, so you've got your, 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 uh, your, uh, map. <laughs> I guess I'm looking at the map. You've got your, you know, beginning part. I'm reading and talking at the same time, which is right now. Which is, you've got your beginning part, your background, synopsis, how it starts. And then you've basically got your hex crawl here for the most part. Um, and here. So it's a, you know, three pages of hex crawl. And then you come into what is the ogre and the hag, which is kind of the finale. You would, yeah, as, no, as noted, you might, an ogre is pulling the cart, so you're going to encounter the ogre. How is the ogre going to be uh, to the party? Is Are they going to be friendly to the ogre? Are they going to fight the ogre? Are they going to do whatever? That's all part of what they can do. And then finally, the hag. I did make another map here because I wanted to make it clear to any GMs running it that the hag is pretty far away, so she can use her tactics if they go after her. Um, and then I have some conclusions with some follow-up adventure, uh, adventures, which I think is important. Um, you might I see that in some uh, adventures. I don't see it in others. I like the idea that you're leaving somebody with some ideas like, OK, um, if you killed the hag, then what might happen? Maybe her sisters are going to come after you. OK, if you killed the hag, what about the reef below? What could go on there? Right. So you want to give some some hints, especially if you have an idea. If you have no idea, then obviously you don't need to do that. But uh, and then I list the magic items that are in the 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 adventure. And then the last page is the open uh, gaming license because I'm using this under the, the open gamer license, uh, because I'm using, you know, obviously uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Although you can't use the word Dungeons and Dragons in it, and I do not. <laughs> but I can say it here because I'm not using the open gamer license. So yeah, I think it's been, it been really interesting. I, I would love to get a conversation going about what people think if you have questions about, um, or if you've published adventures for other people, like what you think about publishing adventures for others. Uh, how, how is it different for you? Is it something that you're interested in doing? Is it just, does it seem out of reach? Uh, do you want to have questions about how to put it up on drive through I can try to help some people with that. Um, it's not so difficult, believe it or not. It's actually pretty simple. And um, hopefully I'm going to be putting up more and more adventures. So if you guys are interested in this, I will put a link. Um, you can pick it up on drive RPG. Also, um, ring the bell and subscribe if you haven't, if you got this far. And I'll see you next time.